Every image is a new discovery and each will give humanity a view of the universe that we've never seen before. This image, as we're looking at it, what we're seeing is not just all the galaxies, but there's a cluster here. And, you know, it's really, there's so much detail here. It's the largest, most advanced, most expensive space telescope ever made. The James Webb Space Telescope. The product of decades of research, design, and innovation. This huge machine is built to look further into the universe than ever before. And there were those that argued that it couldn't be done. Launched Christmas Day, 2021, the James Webb Telescope has traveled one million miles from Earth to solve the greatest mysteries of our solar system. It's gonna allow us to understand every phase of cosmic history for the last 13 and a half billion years. The world's premier space observatory has just delivered its first gifts. These breathtaking images, and it's only the beginning. These images are gonna remind the world that America can do big things. There's nothing beyond our capacity. The James Webb Space Telescope is designed to revolutionize our understanding of the cosmos. It has three main missions. To see the earliest light from the Big Bang. To study the formation of galaxies and stars. And to look for signs of life around distant planets. The very first images from this space observatory have delivered on this promise. First up, the deepest and sharpest infrared image of the distant universe ever really gorgeous, and it's teeming with galaxies. And that's something that has been true for every image we've gotten with Webb. We can't take blank sky. Everywhere we look, there's galaxies everywhere. So we have everything from the deepest infrared image of the universe so far, a stellar nursery, a star dying, and the spectrum of an atmosphere of an exoplanet or a planet orbiting another star. Yes, this is a set of galaxies that are uh, sort of locked in a cosmic dance. And so they're moving and they're, um, two of them are merging and we can see all of them moving around in that um, and, the, and their interactions. I think the greatest promise of the James Webb Space Telescope is it will answer questions that none of us have imagined or thought to ask. And the discovery potential is huge. And uh, I think it's gonna have an, an amazing effect on humanity. James Webb will go where no other telescope has gone before. Uh, we are going to see how, uh, how stars and protoplanetary systems were formed, which led to the formation of planets. We are going to see a lot more than we have seen before. Three, two, one, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope, our window on the universe. The first conference to consider a telescope like Webb took place in 1989, before the Hubble Space Telescope was even launched. This is because scientists already knew that if they wanted to see the faintest, earliest light of the universe, they would need a radically different type of instrument to Hubble. Unlike Hubble, that uh, primarily operated in the visible spectrum, in order for us to be able to see back in time to those very first uh, galaxies, James Webb is actually going to primarily work in the infrared uh, spectrum. The photons that started off in the optical wavelengths that our eyes could see, because the universe is expanding, that light has shifted into the infrared. Its wavelengths have gotten longer. But that's a trick that Mother Nature played on us. The first light that ever appeared was produced by the first stars and galaxies 13.5 billion years ago. Then as the universe grew, this light became redder and fainter until it's now invisible to our eyes. But Webb is designed to overcome our limitations, to allow us to see what has never been seen before. I'm looking at light that is very faint, comes from very far back in time, 
So I have to catch more photons. I need a bigger mirror. I need something seven times bigger than Hubble. How much detail the mirror can capture is directly related to the size of the mirror area that collects light from the objects being observed. A larger area collects more light. This was a challenge to our engineers to, to think of how they could produce the technology that the scientists needed. The only way to make a very large telescope fit inside the nose fairing of a launch vehicle. In this case, the European Space Agency's Ariane 5 rocket is to make the instrument fold up like some enormous piece of origami. I'd already been talking to my friends here at Goddard about, can't we build a telescope that unfolds in space and maybe not too expensive? So uh, my friends laughed at me because that was too hard. So this is a revolutionary concept. Nobody had ever tried it before, but I always thought we would find a way. The mirror is built of 18 separate elements, each of which is made and installed with incredible precision to replicate a single large mirror that can reveal the tiniest of details. So that's so precise that, that I, can find, I could find the heat signature of a bumblebee on the moon if I was using this telescope from Earth which means in our case, we can find a star that a photon came off 13 and a half billion years ago. The mirrors are fantastic. They are made out of a material called beryllium, uh, which is six times stronger than steel, but only about the third of the density of aluminum. But beryllium doesn't reflect infrared light that well. So we coat the mirror in gold, because gold reflects infrared. And it looks gorgeous, right? Um, but we didn't build it to look gorgeous. It's actually functional. The mirrors send light to four instruments, two cameras and two spectrographs that can analyze the chemical makeup of galaxies, stars, and the atmospheres of distant planets, looking for biomarkers, the chemical signs of life. Many challenges had to be solved. Maybe we underestimated some of those challenges in the early days. I'm sure we did. But building the telescope is only the beginning. For the Webb telescope to be able to detect such faint light, the telescope must be kept very, very cold. How cold? We're going to run this optic at minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which means I'm designing materials, even glue that holds the structure together, has to now work at cryogenic temperatures. If you're going to build an infrared space telescope that wants to see, you know, the, the first light that turned on in the universe, they're going to be very, very dim. Now, since they're very dim, you do not want that telescope to be glowing brighter than the very stars it's looking at. To keep the telescope cool, it must avoid the heat given off by the sun and the earth, which drove many engineering choices. First, unlike Hubble, the Webb telescope could not be in low Earth orbit. That, that's like, you know, uh, trying to keep a beer cold next to a blast furnace. So putting it in low Earth orbit would be a, a make our thermal design for this observatory just more of a nightmare. The solution is to send Webb out into deep space, a million miles from Earth, to a point called the Lagrange 2, or L2. This is a gravitationally stable place in space that Webb can circle as it orbits the sun with the Earth. So what starts is this really, hey, just help me find out where did we come from and are we alone, leads to this massive engineering undertaking for a bigger mirror than humankind has ever put in orbit, flying it further away and operating it colder. And then with that, we started on a path of a decade long of invention. Even at a million miles from Earth, the heat of the sun would make the telescope useless, and the size and weight of the instrument ruled out using conventional cooling systems to keep it cold. You can't do that for a six and a half meter optic. You can't put enough refrigerators up there behind it. You wouldn't launch them, they'd be too heavy, right? So we have to do what's called passively cool this giant optic. We're going to do it just by pointing it into the blackness of space, let the telescope just cool into the, the darkness of space. 
to protect Webb from the heat of the sun requires one of its most ambitious innovations, a giant sun shield the size of a tennis court made of five layers of reflective fabric, each as thin as a human hair. The sun shield has been the source of so much of our efforts of late to get the telescope done and get it into space. There has never been a spacecraft out there that has had such a large deployable sun shield with so many uh, intricate steps. Um, and it took a lot of technology, brand new technology, in order to develop the correct shape, the number of layers, the folding methodology, and even the deployment system was, is all brand new. Testing the system proved to be one of the biggest challenges, like the Hubble Space Telescope was. Everything had to be proven to work here on Earth. We had learned from, from Hubble that, that one thing which was really important was to test out all the systems, including the optics. And so all that testing has to be done. One of the hardest things engineers have had to do on web is work on the ground and simulate zero G, because otherwise, we're gonna deploy something on the ground that'll either break because gravity will pull it out or it'll give us a false feeling that it deployed but only gravity pulled it out. Then I get on space and gravity isn't there. What if it doesn't open up on its own? Two weeks after launch, Webb has to unfold this incredibly complex piece of equipment alone. Years of computer simulation and physical testing have gone into the design but all is riding on this critical phase of the mission. The first challenge will be the sun shield. There's 178 release mechanisms on the James Webb, and they're responsible for initiating James Webb's unfolding sequence. All of these 178 release mechanisms are single point failures, which means they, every single one of them has to work. And so we have one shot to make this right. OC, this is uh, Jeff Ops. You can go ahead and execute PE stop deploy. Happy executing. After a carefully orchestrated release sequence, the 70 foot sun shield is fully deployed successfully. It indicates that all five layers of the sun shield are fully tensioned. Significant milestone accomplished. Job well done, sun shield team. Job well done. Now that Webb has protection from the sun's heat, it's time for the main event. Unfolding and aligning the primary mirror segments as though they're one. All so the telescope can focus correctly on faraway galaxies. Stations, at this time we have a nominal LOS on DSS-36, our backup antenna at Canberra. When the day of reckoning arrives, all eyes are on the mirrors, and one by one, the golden flower unfolds. We only have 5,000 5, steps, steps remaining, remaining 4,000, 3,000, 1,000, and we have a fully deployed JWST observatory. Twenty-six years and $10 billion after it was first proposed, and nearing its target destination in deep space, the James Webb Space Telescope begins the critical and complex process of mirror alignment. Tiny mechanical motors, or actuators, are used to achieve this. Each mirror is aligned to one ten thousandth the thickness of a human hair. What's even more amazing is that the engineers and scientists working on the Webb Telescope literally had to invent how to do this. Telescope. Stand by for project manager. Stand by. Decades of work by a global team of scientists and engineers pay off. What we're seeing in, the, in this deep field image, Webb's first deep field, is a massive cluster of galaxies. And this field allows us to look for some of the very first luminous structures in the universe, the first stars and galaxies. Uh, and this was one of the reasons that Webb was originally built. This is only the beginning. Researchers will continue to use Webb to reveal more and more of our vast universe, promising mind-blowing discoveries that we can't even imagine. 
We'll be able to see the formation of stars and planets. We'll also be able to understand atmospheres of exoplanets. In addition to taking images, two of Webb's instruments also obtained data that reveal objects' physical and chemical properties. Webb's near-infrared spectrograph, or NIRSPEC, observed 48 individual galaxies at the same time, a new technology used for the first time in space. We're seeing uh, an exoplanet spectrum for the first time with Webb showing water or steam in its atmosphere. Webb's new image of Stefan's Quintet reveals never-before-seen details of a galaxy group that shows how interacting galaxies trigger star formation in each other, as well as a black hole in a level of detail never seen before. And then remind the American people, especially our children, that there's nothing beyond our capacity. Nothing beyond our capacity. We've done it. We have made this machine. We have brought the resources of NASA, of ESA, and the Canadian Space Agency, and all of the industries, and all of the scientists, the engineers. We've made an astonishing machine. If you put your mind to it and you stick the course, you can achieve astonishing things. And that's a lesson which has applicability well beyond what you do in space with telescopes. It's a lesson for life. These images are going to remind the world that America can do big things.